insulting remarks. I think this is not an in-depth analysis.、Uh, anyway, I agree that it should be made an independent subject. Oh, I got Mr. Lam Shating, President. I have always learned history.、Um, in junior century level, I studied colonial history, the、um, anti-Japanese period, as well as contemporary history, and I have deep feelings. Towards history education, when we study history, we have to know about the bright side of the Chinese civilization as well as the world. But at the same time, we need to know about the dark side. This is more important than just learning about the glory of the past. And、um, with history, we can know what can be done or what should be done and which what shouldn't. From history, we can learn from our mistakes. So that we won't repeat them in the future. So,、um, what has gone wrong with contemporary Chinese history? And、um, there is a serious problem of history being skewed. So it has always been a bad habit of the Chinese Communist Party. <clears throat> in the、um, book of the.、Um, Creation of the nation. There was a picture. Any, anyone who is defeated or any enemy,、um, would have their pictures deleted or taken out. We have seen many sad episodes in Chinese history. For whether it's the Great Famine, the Cultural Revolution, or the June Fourth Massacre in 1989. Given the circumstances, it's very hard for us to understand contemporary Chinese history. President, if we cannot correctly learn about historical facts, how can we educate our future generation? Today, a number of members criticized two former members, Yao Weicheng and Sixtus Leung. Yes, we should condemn their behaviors. However, are their behaviors due to deficiencies in our history education regime? Would the current wave of Hong Kong independence be due to deficiencies in the past, so that our young people have misunderstandings? From this perspective,、um, we well, we are just lying to ourselves, and we cannot see the truth. We、um, calls for Hong Kong independence were born from wrong, from very wrong policies from Hong Kong and the Chinese government. It's against. The spirit of the Basic Law and One Country, Two Systems, as well as Hong Kong people governing Hong Kong. If the central government fulfills its promise by allowing universal suffrage of the chief executive and legco, the、um, waves of or calls for Hong Kong independence would recede or even disappear. How many people in Hong Kong really believe that they are part of the so-called Hong Kong civilization instead of the Chinese civilization? I think that would be a minority. However, the、um, this minority is constantly being challenged, and it's constantly expanded. I'm not sure about the agenda of these people who are encouraging Hong Kong independence, but if we want our young people to correctly understand our history, if this is a way to crack down on Hong Kong independence, I think this is way too naive. Members, President, the significance. Of Chinese history education 
is to allow our students and young people to be critical and independent. We do not want them to just memory, memorize the historical facts or the name of emperors, etc. We want them to learn from history. Recently, I read an important book about the Great Famine. It's called um, The Gravestone, and um, the author is called Yang, who is a seasoned reporter at Xinhua News Agency at the Great during the Great Famine, people have to eat their own children. It was really cruel. If we can educate our students of our young of our darkest times in history and have them understand the causes of such incidents, we can let them know that it, it was um, it wasn't a disaster. It was because of people. They would know why the Chinese civilization would suffer an unprecedented famine in world history. We can let them know that it was due to um, a reluctance for um, local officials or officers to um, report the real situation to the central authority. A lot of food was available. That was the fact. Such lessons in history are worth um, teaching to our younger generation. Mr. Michael Tian. President, on, the, um, on requiring the teaching of Chinese history as an independent subject at junior century level, um, we are going to mandate all secondary schools to teach Chinese history instead of just 73%. This is a request I have made to the administration for years, so I totally support Mr. Horace Chung's motion. I don't just want to talk about the 22% of the schools who are not implementing it. I want to talk about the um, importance and attitude when we talk about Chinese history education. Apart, of, apart from figures and names of historical figures and so on, nowadays you can find everything on the internet. So if someone asks me if I remember the phone number of my wife, I might say no because it's all in my phone. We are not trying to um, turn our students into machines. We want them to know how they can channel information into knowledge and in turn channel knowledge into attitude or um, the attitude to seek the truth. We, we talk about anti-Japanese occupation to the young people nowadays. I think um, that would be enough. The oath in the oath taking Sega to members elect um, insulted history in the face of the public and all the Chinese people. They cannot be held accountable to their electors. So um, they have really crossed the line in terms of moral standard. How could we expect them to respect our country? And um, national anthems are being booed at soccer matches. 14% of the electors support self-determination and um, pro-independence candidates. A lot of young people only pay attention to two systems but not one country. The rise of such trends must be relevant to our education system or Chinese history education. A lot of members talked about learning from history. 
And、um, but a Tang emperor said that we can actually learn from people. Education is about、um, teaching morals, so teachers play a very important role. If we, when we educate Chinese history, if we, if it's only、um, a one-sided exercise, then people, students, would just fall asleep. Students should act, should actually prepare at home and read supplementary materials. They are certainly very interesting. And during class, half the time should be spent on classroom discussions. For the Qin Dynasty,、um, the most important aspect is not when the, the dynasty was built and destroyed. The key is to comment on the accomplishments or deficiencies of the Qin Emperor. As for the、um, dictatorship, the unification of currency, and so on, students can judge for themselves which of these were significant. So、uh, all these are up for debate. Students can、um, take up different kinds of jobs when they graduate, but whatever they do, they must have the right morals. So history might be the most crucial subject out of all. At the end of the day, we—I want you to know that history is a life. Students get bored easily. When I was small, history education was really boring. I almost fell asleep. So how can we make it more interesting? Movies might be a good tool. Stephen Chow is. One of the most famous actors and directors in Hong Kong. A lot of、um, people might think that his movies are, are, are trivial and meaningless. However, we can always learn something. In one of his movies,、um, it was about the head of a、um, beggar clan, and the emperor was really worried about that clan. And、um, the head of the clan,、um, starred by、um, Stephen Chow, said that. You can decide how many beggars we have in the nation. If you are a good king, then no one would have to beg. In history education, we want our students to learn such to learn these lessons. If we ask our students to memorize everything, well, we we、um, just ask them to memorize these quotes. This is it, it wouldn't work. Well, as for the clan of the beggars, we had to know the more important lessons. In the future, how secretary, how can we teach Chinese <coughs> history in ancient and modern history? What have we learned? Everyone has made mistakes and.、Um, Accomplishments in different dynasties and different people have different takes. So、um, we want to allow our students to debate and come up with their own answers. So this is what I want to emphasize in the teaching of Chinese history as as an a compulsory subject. Mr. Riley. I speak in support of Mr. Hori Zhang's motion to make Chinese history an independent subject in secondary,、uh, junior secondary level. I think this is motion, motion is timely and meets with Hong Kong's uh, uh, present uh, needs.、Uh, I don't think I have to dwell on this. As everyone knows, young people actively participate in various social campaigns. And from the slogans they use, the messages they deliver, it can be seen that、uh, the young people. Like understanding of the history and the culture of our nation, the two members elect, sisters、um, Liang and Yao Weijing, use the word China to describe our own nation. They are oblivious to the、um, anti-Japanese sentiment that we have. All these remarks show that they don't understand Hong Kong and Chinese history.
For several thousand years, Hong Kong has been a part of China. Whether it's the culture, the language, we are an inalienable part of、um, our nation. Why? We say that Chinese history should be made an subject, independent subject of junior secondary level. According to DAB survey, 70% of the respondents said that Hong Kong students lack sufficient knowledge of Chinese history. Well, you, even without such、uh, surveys, all you need to do is to、uh, take a taxi, go to a Chinese restaurant, you talk to people. A lot of people will tell you that what's the government up to? Young people lack、uh, knowledge on. Chinese history. How come that they、uh, have such behavior? You must press the government to make Chinese history an independent subject. Why is it timely? Because the EDB is now、uh, doing a consultation, and you can take a look at what's happening in Hong Kong and try to make amends. Well, at least make Chinese history an independent subject in sec junior secondary level. In this chamber, we are moving this motion、uh, because you are right now are conduct conducting a consultation and you want to seek views from us. But regrettably, in your response, the secretary、uh, made a very disappointing reply. You just、uh, repeat and rehash your old lines, and that is、um, this:、um, the subject of Chinese history is a compulsory subject at. Junior secondary level. If this approach works now, how come that the number of students、uh, taking DSE as a Chinese subject is declining year after year? And why is it that when we mention Chinese history as a subject, a lot of students told us that they are, they get bored? And how come that so many young people are making remarks? And doing things which show that they lack basic understanding of Chinese history. Have you ever thought about、um, these、uh, issues, Secretary? Well, during this consultation period, you can、uh, give.、Uh, Further thoughts on the new、uh, phenomenon in our society.、Uh, think about the what Hong Kong people think and try to make Chinese history an independent subject. Our Colleagues can also consider this. When a lot of people、uh, elsewhere are learning Chinese history and Mandarin and try to understand the uniqueness of China, yet many Hong Kong people are going further away from our culture and Chinese history. That's isn't it a failure on our education system? If you don't seriously look into the issue, well, then that's no good. You have to、um, have the courage to make. Chinese history, an independent subject at junior secondary level. If you don't do that, you will miss the golden opportunity to ratify the situation.、Um, f- uh, I personally agree with Mrs. Regina Yip's、uh, remarks, and that is、um, the students should learn Chinese subject both at junior and senior secondary level. As what member said, well, we don't have sufficient learning time. Chinese history uh, spans uh, several thousand years, whether Um, is the present approach where you are putting emphasis on the ancient rather than contemporary history, or the other way around? We we don't have enough time to learn Chinese history. Let's have the senior secondary students learning Chinese history as well, so that they can learn more about Chinese history, and also they should learn Chinese、uh, classical、uh, works as well. But we don't have sufficient time. We have two classes each cycle, and that's、uh, grossly inefficient. If the let's call the community and the administration uh, uh, agree that we should make Chinese history an independent subject at junior secondary level, then it means that we clearly see the problem here.、Uh, young people don't have sufficient knowledge of、uh, the Chinese history and culture. When the community, the let's call, and the administration、um, agree to the idea of making this an independent subject, it. Delivers a clear message to the community that we are attaching importance to the subject, and we will take things forward. And Mr. Yip mentioned about a lot of technical、uh, issues, like insufficient teaching time and also a lack of specialized teachers and so on. But this is all an egg and、um, chicken problem. If well, if the government、uh, agrees on this motion. It must think about adding extra time, lesson time, 
And if that is done, well, more students will take Chinese history as an exam, and a lot more students will later serve as a teachers, and then we can have specialized teachers. So that all boils bo- down to the fact that we must agree on the motion of making Chinese history an independent subject. I, ha- I must say something about the content of the curriculum as well. A lot of people talked about the content. I think uh, it's subject to discussion. You must uh, talk about uh, um, the merits and demerits of the different dynasties as well. Well, are we all agree that there should be a reform to the contents of the subject? Well, let me respond to um, some comments, technical issues. I've responded uh, to that. And others say that in the uh, name of Chinese history, people will be reviving national education. I must. Um, I must say that uh, national education is something that should be done, and it should not be, say, um, the the uh, disguise to something else. Mr. Michael, look. Well, the ancient history covering the different uh, dynasties, and um, right up to the. Uh, People's Republic of China, Republic of China. Well, I am very familiar with these terms. It's not that I achieved good grace in Chinese history. I've taken Chinese history in my junior gen- secondary level. I'm not very, uh, I'm a, not a good academic achiever. Well, why do I still remember these uh, different dynasties? And it's because the foundation education is very important. I've uh, recited the diff- the names of the different dynasties, and I was taught these names by my Chinese history teacher at the secondary, junior secondary level. Foundation education is important, and it can uh, well we always re- memorize what we've been taught in our foundation education, so I can. Recall all these uh, names of the different dynasties. Now, education um, these days we we attach a lot of importance about analytical thinking, attaching importance to history, learning from history, and in the liberal studies in senior secondary education. Well, if we have the same, well, it um, is similar to Chinese history in. The junior secondary school because it can train up a student's um, analytical ability is an indispensable part of our system. So it's a regrettable, unfortunate that it's not a compulsory subject. Well, 20% of the students don't study uh, Chinese history in junior secondary school, and it's not fair to them. We uh, must have. Analyze things based on um, knowledge and facts, and so it's uh, important that we learn Chinese history. We have a history of five thousand years. We are one of the four uh, civilizations in the world, and we are the only one which um, uh, has a um, history up to now, and uh, we have um, collective wisdom accumulated, and so on. Is uh, for, well, education is a specialized uh, subject, and I agree with Mr. Yip Kin Yin's uh, remarks. Although I may differ from him in some of our political views, but anyway, the legislature is a is a platform for us to discuss our political views. Now, recently, I read an interview report uh, with uh, Mr. Sisters Long, and he said that uh, he once answered a question. The who is the first uh, emperor in China? And Sixtus Lung, Lung did not know the answer, and he just uh, wrote, wrote uh, Baggio as the answer of a favorite uh, football star of his. And if you lack knowledge in history, then your um, comprehension and in, uh, of certain things will be affected. Uh, emperor Qin is the first emperor in uh, China, and because he was expanding his territory, so as a result, some two thousand years ago, Hong Kong was already a uh, part of made, or was already made part of China. So this is a fact. And Mrs. Sixtus Lang was not aware of this historical fact, 
and that's why he um, had uh, this um, um, independence thinking, and he made a lot of mistakes in what he said. And he said that Hong Kong has a longer history than um, China. So these are the rem ridiculous remarks he made, and so that shows that uh, his uh, well, a knowledge of historical facts is very important to our analy uh, developing analytical ability. Some people, well, are too sensitive. Um, I mean, reacted too sensitively when they um, heard the word China. And they are mixing the two concepts of national education and Chinese history. Of course, I support national, national education myself. Whenever we mention national education, we will talk about Chinese history, say, having the objective on um, sort of enhancing people's national identity. And they talk about brainwashing, uh, scary remarks uh, like that. In civic education curriculum, well, nation, well, the uh, national identity, enhancing national identity is one of the objectives as well. Well, Tanya Chan is a member of the Civic Party. Well, they name themselves as a Civic Party. Should shouldn't they should they be talking about cancelling civic education? So I think they're they're flawed in their logic, Mr. Eddie Chu referred to some uh, nation, the nation's policies. And some scholars were um, urging, appealing that uh, Hong Kong people should identify with China. Now, Hong Kong has been returned to China. What's the problem of um, trying to enhance our national identity? What's the problem of being a Chinese? Should we be a 50% uh, Chinese, uh, seventy percent Chinese or thirty percent Chinese. Mr. Eddie G is not here. I would like to ask him very much. If he is not a Chinese, how come that he uh, is qualified to stand for the electoral election? S whenever we talk about history, people will try to like to separate uh, our history with the nation's history, and they are also pitting these uh, two um, concepts uh, against each other. Why Hong Kong was open for trade? Because that was the Opium War, and the British people were um, were uh, offering opium to China, and we had to sign all these unequal treaties. We should learn the lesson in a hard way. Mr. Dr. Sanya San was working for the nation and was defending the uh, dignity of the nation. So we should inherit his thoughts, and we should learn Chinese subject. I mean Chinese history. I'm a Chinese, and I'm also a father, so I have to, um, you know, misspell, misunderstand, dispel misunderstanding. I hope that the young generation can accept a very uh, good uh, Chinese history curriculum. So I speak in support of Mr. Horace Jiang's motion to make Chinese history an independent subject at junior secondary level. What do you think? Mr. Ma Fong Kwok. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I speak in support of Mr. Horace Jones' motion to require Chinese history to be set as an independent subject. Last month, on the 12th of October, at the Council meeting in the solemn oath-taking process of the Legislative Council, the two former young members of this council called themselves um, China and the uh, insulted the nation, and in fact, uh, their ignorant, insulting remarks showed their ignorance of our country's knowledge. And afterwards, a lot of uh, scholars issued joint declarations or joint statements in the in newspapers. Apart from demanding apology from uh, an apology from them, they also requested that the government conduct a comprehensive review and require the teaching of the Chinese history as an independent subject. We have the former curator of uh, Hong Kong History Museum and also professors from universities. They hope that a solution can be provided to tackle the issue of um, setting aside Chinese history. We should have a correct understanding of the harm that uh, that the Japanese army brought to the people of China. 
they, we should understand how in the in three years and eight months Japanese army um, caused a lot of suffer uh, on the part of Hong Kong people. I think had they known about these historical facts, they would not have made such ignorant and insulting remarks. So anyway, what is wrong with our education? In 2012, when uh, education ref uh, curriculum reform was proposed, it was the starting point of our present discussion. At that time, the purpose was to broaden students' horizon so by linking Chinese history with Western history. The objective may not be wrong, but what we can see over the years is that when Chinese history and Western history uh, are, in co are separated and then uh, incorporated as elements of human science, um, people have uh, fragmented knowledge. And 20% of secondary schools at present teach Chinese history in such a manner. But Chinese history and Western history are two different subjects. Chinese history regarded uh, Opium War as um, as uh, as an aggression, um, whereas uh, Western history regarded the Opium War as uh, economic war. And also, if students do not understand thoroughly the historical facts, and before they understand the facts thoroughly, if they are asked to analyze uh, the two different histories, say by comparing uh, Julius Caesar and the emperor in China, how can they really learn the two subjects well? In senior secondary school, I mean, it, um, uh, fewer and fewer students are taking Chinese history subject. In the Hong Kong CE exam, 30% of students took the Chinese history exam, whereas uh, for DSE, only 10%. Has it to do with their um, prospect? The fact is there is not a very keen demand um, of um, History. Not many universities have the um, faculty of history. So people are losing interest in the history subject. Now, what we need to discuss is how the importance of allowing students to learn Chinese history in uh, a comprehensive um, system. Because it can broaden students' horizon. If you don't learn about the past, you won't be able to understand the future. So we need to understand the ups and downs of different dynasties and eras in Chinese history. So as to cultivate the uh, student's perspective of Chinese history as one member of the Chinese uh, race. Otherwise, we will undermine the students' knowledge of the con of our country and of our history. Uh, we should not fragment um, fragmentize uh, the curriculum by incorporating Chinese history elements into the science human science subject. Therefore, we need to require that. Chinese history as an independent subject, as a starting point. There are suggestions that uh, some content in relation to our interaction with the mainland should be included, and I support that. And so how we can enrich the curriculum, how to improve teaching and learning, to cultivate students' interests, to provide sufficient hours of teaching, to ensure the quality of teaching of Chinese history. I think these, all these are up for discussion. We should also give students opportunity to uh, have exchange uh, with the mainland so that they can enhance their knowledge of the mainland as a kind of extracurricular uh, knowledge enrichment. Well, Madam Deputy, if we cannot even provide a fundamental or a foundation education to students, it will be very risky. Um, just like what we saw in the oath-taking process of the two young members, it revealed 
the distorted view of our young people of Chinese history. This is a price that we cannot、uh, afford to pay. Dr. Junius Ho. I speak in support of Mr. Horst Jung's motion on requiring the teaching of Chinese history as an independent subject at junior secondary、uh, level. Well, Madam Deputy, China has a history of five thousand years. It is a treasure trove. The knowledge is so broad that we must cherish this treasure left by our ancestors. Otherwise, it will be a, not only a pity; it will also cause、um, a disruption in the transfer of knowledge and culture. This is not we don't want to see. We want to transfer our tradition and culture to our next generation. Our ancestors' experience have told us the lessons they've learned. The difficulties they've overcome, and we should learn from their experience. In Tang Dynasty, we enjoyed a very、um, prosperous era. So we we called、uh, the the Tangs.、Um, Predecessors, and、uh, in for in other countries we have Chinatowns, and I was taught、uh, about different kings and emperors in different dynasties through、uh, in Chi in Chinese history. I learned by rote, but gradually, upon the guidance of teachers. I was enlightened to learn more about Chinese history. When we have the knowledge, it would be very useful for us in the future. And the first emperor of Ta Tang, Tang Tai Zhong,、uh, talked about the three mirrors. That is, if we could learn from history, we could. Reflect on ourselves, and、uh, Tang Taizong is、uh, one of the first three emperors of Tang, of the Tang Dynasty. He said out, his power is like today. We see. Well, he is still our pride because he. Uh, his wisdom is enshrined, and he talked about the three mirrors, one of which is history. Maybe I should not politicize the matter. Let's not talk about modern China and、uh, other things. I think it can be included in the modern Chinese history, but there are incidents in history that. Through time, we'll be able to better judge the right and wrong of things. I think that we should learn ancient history as well as modern history, and we should also have regard to the、um, aptitude of students. We could we should take a progressive approach. Secondly, I wonder if examinations are necessary. In the learning process, mere memorization may help, but it may not ultimately benefit a student. I think students' interest can be aroused not just by having examinations, but also by giving them assignments and projects. I f I am astonished by the fact that Chinese history is now fragmentized and sprinkled in the curriculum. We really need to patiently explain to students what happened in the history, in our history. We really need teachers, wise teachers, to 
teach students about that. So I think Chinese history should be set as an independent subject. It should not be um, fragmentized and sprinkled in the curriculum. So I absolutely agree that it should be a compulsory subject. Thank you. Dr. Elizabeth Kwok, thank you. President, Chinese people must learn Chinese history. Our history textbooks are the main form of national education. Textbooks on history for almost every country would place national education and patriotism at their at the top of their priority list. For example, in Korea, textbooks are required to emphasize a sense of nationalism and pride. And um, in the United States, the history textbooks recorded American history from the American Indians to the 1940s or 50s. In China, there's only a single volume shared by the entire um, century across all century school levels. A famous philosopher in Qing Dynasty said, "If we want to learn about a country, we must learn its history. If you want to destroy a civilization, you must first destroy its history." Famous historian Qian Mu also said, "A hist a civilization who gets who forgets about history has no hope. A society who ignores history would not have a future." We can see the the significance of history. Today, a number of members have spoken on whether Chinese history should be a compulsory subject. And that um, national education is a brainwashing subject. We cannot ignore the fact that a lot of our young people nowadays do not understand our nation's history, and as such, they they are um, they refuse or they are ignorant towards our history. This led to a lot of skewed perspectives or understanding. And um, that gave rise to the um, to calls of Hong Kong independence. A lot of unreasonable um, movements have been um, breeding, especially among young people. We have seen people who openly insult the country and our civilization in the public. The teaching of Chinese history as an independent subject at junior secondary level is necessary. I think we should not um, ignore political history in our Chinese history education. Um, it should not be too fragmented. Or else, our young people would find it hard to grasp the development of our country. A lot of history teachers told me that the biggest problem with Chinese history education is a lack of class hours. In most schools, there are only two sessions or lessons per day. Since the education reform in 2011, schools could choose to combine Chinese. And world history, or they can also um, they can choose to make it independent, or adopt it into school-based education. So different schools use different modes of teaching. So the actual number of teaching hours available for Chinese history is inadequate to change the situation. The government must make Chinese history an independent and compulsory subject, and by Injecting more resources and increasing the number of lessons. Uh, 
a lot of students told me that they are willing to learn Chinese history, but they find it too boring. So I agree that we should introduce contents that is more appealing. The Education Bureau can put in more resources and produce attractive multimedia materials, and they can make um, the teaching more interesting. DDB should even create games. A lot of students told me that they are only interested in Chinese history because they play games relating to Three Kingdoms. Mr. Tian told us that by understanding history, we can know a lot. A lot of things in life cannot be explained in simple words. History is never wrong, and the only wrong thing is to disrespect history or ignore history. President, I received a letter from the um, Association of Sandry School Principals. They share their views on whether Chinese history education should be made a compulsory subject, and I'd like to quote some of what they said. History education can cultivate a sense of history among students and promote um, reflections. They can also um, promote a wider world view among our students. There should not be any political agenda. President, when Chinese people learn about Chinese history, it's more than a subject, it's an obligation. I agree with the principles that there should not be any political motivation, but I do not agree with some members who said that this is equivalent to brainwash. Chinese people should learn about Chinese history. I speak in support of Mr. Zhang's original motion. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Charles Mo. President, when we look at the content of the motion, the original motion is about whether Chinese history should be made independent in junior century level. However, a lot of members, especially from the pro-establishment camp, um, talked about Hong Kong independence and the two elected former members who had their qualification cancelled. So apparently they already came up with a conclusion, which is if we teach them Chinese history properly when they are young, we wouldn't be where we are today, and the young people would not be talking about Hong Kong independence. So um, this uh, apparently this is um, completely irrelevant to um, the development of de democracy. I think you are exploiting the topic or you might all be too naive. You assume that by having Chinese history education, they would um, think they would think what you think, and they would share the the thoughts of the Chinese communists. This is not reality. You talk about a correct historical narrative, and what does that mean? Um, the chief executive of Macau said the Macau government would work with mainland publishers to um, create a set of unified teaching materials for the whole of Hong Kong, for the whole of Macau. Is that what you are trying to achieve in Hong Kong? If we talk about education, we could discuss whether Chinese history should be made an independent subject, but um, eventually the discussions have become much more political. The deputy said um, such um, moves are in line with the public. The parents would say that they do not agree with those former legislators, but what does it have to do with my children? So um, these two things are completely irrelevant. You are trying to make it political in the original motion. There are criticisms of the current curriculum. That's um, the interaction between Hong Kong and the mainland is inadequate. I'm not sure whether this is the objective of Chinese history education. 
is it to promote interaction between Hong Kong and the mainland? Wh why is this important for Chinese history education? I do not understand that. On um, whether it should be made an independent and compulsory subject. Well, I don't want to be too political, and I don't want to be sidetracked. So let's talk about the education side. If you are to introduce a subject or an independent and compulsory subject, as a lot of members have said, it's a question about le lesson hours and resources. I assume that the Education Bureau has unlimited resources. Class hours are still limited. We only have so many hours. I don't know how you can get around that. If we are to introduce a subject, we should um, introduce more subjects than just Chinese history. Parents have a lot of um, areas of focus. What about Chinese, English, and um, mathematics? Should we introduce more hours? This Monday at the Education Bureau, the government said they would promote STEM education, science, engineering, etc., and technology because Hong Kong needs talents. The relevant subjects are um, not very popular in recent years. For all these subjects which are important to our future generation, can we make them all compulsory? Resources and class hours are limited. If you are to conduct a review, you should do a complete one on which subjects should be made compulsory. You should review whether Chinese, English, and math education is adequate. You, should, you shouldn't be biased and just pinpoint Chinese education. And um, you assume that by implementing Chinese history education, you can um, train up um, people who would um, only say yes. If you care about the welfare of our younger generation, we should address the entire education system. The system itself is very is a very in a very bad state for liberal studies. You want to promote national education because liberal education cannot fulfill your objectives. And um, the teachers are really confused. At the end, um, you should be thinking about Chinese, English, and math education first. A lot of middle class families send their children to international schools. I met some old friends recently. A lot of their children were sent to international schools. They said um, they cannot even speak Chinese, even though they are locally bred. So um, in the same city, we have different education systems, some studying local schools, some international schools. For those in international schools, after they um, where after they are sent abroad for studies overseas, they won't ever come back. So um, the the question is about how you can manipulate people who still stay in Hong Kong. So we are back to the same question: how we should worry more about Chinese English and math education for our students instead of Chinese history. You should not make our education system political by promoting Chinese history education. The problem problems will not go away. At the very um, basic level, you should um, focus on other areas. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Lang Kuo Hong, do you wish to speak? I wish to speak. It's a point of order. According to the basic law, I have to give some background first. So which rule are you referring to? Please um, point out which rule you are referring to according to the basic law. We need a quorum, which is equivalent to half the number of members. So as I can see, 
the number of members is way less than half. I hope the deputy would be aware of the situation. Quorum call, please. Next time you members can point out which rule you are referring to directly. According to the interpretation of law, it, the interpret um, the constitution is overarching. We must follow the basic law. Okay.
是否有其他議員想發言 ？Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Horace Chang. You, I, I'm going to speak.、Uh, Mr. Lang Kong, you want wish to speak? Yes. Mr. Chang, well, please take your seat first and wait、uh, for Mr. Lang to speak before you speak. Like, I would like to remind members: if you wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. Thank you,、um, Madam Deputy. What is the motion today? It is、um, about making Chinese history a compulsory independent subject, and the conclusion is that Chinese history will become a compulsory subject. I studied Chinese history myself. I don't object to people studying Chinese history, but as I said many times, in this chamber is a, is a re really a political platform, and we're talking about politics here. If you look at、uh, what members said, it's all about、uh, this as well. We must know about history. We must know Chinese history. If we don't have such knowledge, then there will be problems, and you don't know what China China is all about, and you are not a Chinese. As a result, it's difficult for Chinese people to study Chinese history because. Chinese history gets changed all the time,、um, Madam Deputy. You are young, and you didn't.、Um, you were not here at the period when Chinese history was being changed all the time by the PRC, and also starting from、um, the day when the Chinese Communist Party established PRC.、Um, Well, what we meant by history, what happened in the past is history. So you reviewed what happened, you chose、uh, choose certain、uh, materials, and you try to explain why certain things happen. So you must have、uh, some sort of stance. The P PRC's history, well, comes with different、uh, perspectives on history based on different、uh, materials. Let me try to、uh, give you an account. After the war with the、uh, Kuomintang, the anti-CCP gangs、uh, were rising up, and every time, because of the one-party rule of CCP, people were trying to. Are distorted、uh, certain things, and some years later, that became history. Well, after the collapse of the Gang of Four, the CCP held a meeting to endorse certain parts of history、um, to be said、uh, counted as a Chinese history. Well, in the book 1984, we are familiar with this book. There is this truth department. Of course, maybe today we are having the truth department as well. The two members elect us, Exodus Long and Yao Weicheng, when we're this, this being disqualified. While the CCP,、uh, the NPCSC, was really the truth、uh, department. War is peace. Ignorance is knowledge. So these are the words from the book, and I would like to add: history is lies. It doesn't mean that history will come with its own lies. It's people who interpret history tell lies. As a Chinese person, well, what part? Well, whose history, historical time, would you believe it? You're in. Ah,、uh, Zhou Zhou Yongkang and Bo Xilai were、um, f fighting against the CCP. If the two of them,、um, so the, the two ups rising were succeeded, then the history that I will be reading today will be saying that、uh, Xi Jinping is a bad guy. Madam Deputy, Confucius said.
Wow, Confucius is a philosopher. He said that he's going to write history about uh, the spring and autumn uh, period, and he tried to well come up with his own version of history. So um, his historical account was agreed upon by the CCP. CCP is a uh, one-party rule type of government, and he is thinks it's, it's greater than Confucius. Well, in my mind, if we are to discuss contemporary history, we should put more emphasis on it. That's what you said. But what about the history of the PRC? The rulers um, are writing work, writing history in the way that that they win over their enemies. And Mao Zedong said that people are the ones who make history. But then if people are pressed by the one-party rule, well, then that history must uh, w would be written up and def certainly by the party. When the main characters of history become the slaves of history, while well, the history can only be uh, a mockery of the people. And the party can maneuver history in whatever they like, and they can use it as a, as a reason to kill people, to cover up their evil acts. So I think the motion is totally wrong today. Hong Kong, Chinese people, it's not necessary for Chinese people to study Chinese history. We must change history instead. We must, we can only have a true history after the CCP rule has ended. And history must be written for the people because people are the ones who create history, who make history. I believe the next generation will study Chinese history. And if the CCP goes down, then Chinese history must uh, will become a compulsory subject. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Porter. Madam Deputy, why are we spending so much time um, on this motion and why so um, many members are speaking about the subject so passionately? We are talking about a review of the subject. It should be sub a subject for the education sector instead. But a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, told me that he originally chose to study Chinese history, but some um, of his um, friends told him that um, females were better in language and they should excel Chinese in Chinese history. So why don't you choose politics? Then there was this remark made. Yesterday's history is um, today's politics, and today's politics becomes the history of tomorrow. So that's why some political figures, if they studied um, Chinese history, they would uh, be um, citing references from history to help them in their decisions. And those who study history should become good politicians. For example, uh, Mao Zedong uh, studied Chinese history all the time. He had always had a hist history book with him. And, and a lot of people who studied uh, Chinese history uh, made good commentaries on politics. So that's why uh, we are seeing so uh, much discussion here today. We should be focusing really on the um, Chinese history subject, a second junior secondary level. I agree with Mr. Uh, Yip Kien Yun said that uh, 
there are inadequate Chinese history lessons and the the subject is not uh, taught by specialized teachers so as a result there are many problems and there are also problems in uh, choosing the subject and so on so all these problems have to be ratified but then are we um, so sort of over discussing the topic what are we talking about when we refer to Chinese history are we talking about a stance um, towards Chinese history uh, a lot of uh, second, junior secondary school students complained about uh, being bored by the subject. There are so many facts and data, <coughs> and they didn't don't have the opportunity to uh, have um, good analytical power through studying Chinese history, and they would not uh, be um, advocating independence for Hong Kong. Etc. Etc. So coming back to this uh, very specific subject on whether we should make uh, this subject an independent subject. Well, you said yourself that this is a consultation period. Shouldn't it be a good time for us to understand what the problems are? And also at this time, when young people are so unhappy with their society, well, should they be encouraged to learn more about Chinese history and culture? And also Mrs. Virginia Yip said the subject should also cover Chinese classical, historical, or philosophical works and bell as well. If we want to just focus on Chinese history as a subject and not on uh, why Hong Kong uh, young people uh, do, are not patriotic, then uh, should be focusing on the emotion and are we blowing things out of proportion? Well, there are so many problems now, so maybe we should uh, do more in civic education and national education. But maybe we should not be acting like Mr. Leung Kwok Hong, who shouts in his speech. Uh, I think it's difficult to cram too many things into or materials into the subject. Perhaps we should not be teaching so much. Well, students have the whole world of opportunities later on in the years to learn more about history. And uh, I also must emphasize that if we are really to make an improvement, can uh, we well present this subject as a choice for them as an independent subject? I agree to that. Should we have specialized teachers? Yes. Can we make the subject more interesting? Yes. Well, I have talked to many in the tourism industry who have not um, received a good education, maybe, but then they l learn so much from their work because they travel um, all around the world. They learn the history of different places. So if resources uh, permit, maybe the schools should uh, teach more about um, stories of different places, the geography of different places, etc. And this is preferable than um, just um, having the students taking exams and so on. So if we can integrate world history and Chinese history, then that would be better because it would be more interesting and it will be more inspiring for the students as well because then students would know it later what whether they can, uh, they would um, choose the subject in the future studies. I support this motion, but I don't think we should have uh, too much political discussions on this uh, uh, motion. Does any other member wish to speak? If not, Mr. Horace Chang, you can now speak on the amendments. You have five minutes. Madam Deputy, history allows us to reflect on ourselves allows us to have humility through history, uh, we can improve. So uh, it is only right that we attach importance to uh, the history of, uh, to the subject of Chinese history.
And unfortunately, of the amendments, only Doctor, uh, only Mrs. Regina Ip's motion actually supports my idea of teaching Chinese as an independent subject. Whereas for other amendments, um, they do not support the idea. Mr. Ip Kin Yun's amendment mentions the insufficient number of teaching hours, the lack of interest on the part of students, and yet I think. He doesn't understand the importance and the benefits of making Chinese history as an independent subject. And in fact, if Chinese history becomes part of a subject along with other um, history, how can a teacher who is required to teach all these subjects be a specialized teacher? So I cannot agree with Mr. Ip Kin Yun. Only by making Chinese history an independent and compulsory subject would we be able to address Mr. Ip Kin Yun's concerns on specialized teacher for Chinese history and insufficient teaching hours. Mr. Uh, Dr. Edward Yu. Suggest that uh, there should be more elements of interactions between Hong Kong and China in history, and I think this, and I think his idea is not tallying with my motion. As for Doctor Kwokaki's amendment, which suggests that um, all incidents such as uh, Occupy Central Movement, 1917 riots, and Nobel Peace Prize to Mr. Liu Xiaobo. All these uh, should be incorporated in uh, the subject. I think it is turning a Chinese history textbook into a material of uh, propaganda. If we endorse this amendment in the council, I don't think we're doing justice to our next generation who will be learning Chinese history. In Dr. Kwokaki's speech, I can see his political, personal political stance and his views on um, the on our country. He's not really addressing the emotions topic, which is about Chinese history subject. Chinese history subject should not be uh, used as a tool. It should not be used as a propaganda to teach the history of Chinese Communist Party. That's what he said. But I must ask, where in the motion can you find these suggestions coming from me? I hope Dr. Kwokaki can read my motion carefully and listen carefully to my speech. I support Mrs. Regina Ip's amendment, and I oppose all four others' amendments. Secretary for Education. President, I would like to thank the original motion moved by Mr. Horace Chang, as well as amendments moved by Mr. Yip Kin Yun, Mrs. Regina Yip, Dr. Yu Chong Yim, and Dr. K.K. Kwok, as well as the comments from other members. We have discussed a few key areas today. One, Chinese history education is important. So um, we should learn Chinese history properly. As Chinese people, it's a given to learn Chinese history. This is something we are sure about. In terms of teaching and learning, in the past we have seen issues with Chinese history education. That's why we want to improve upon the education so that our students can better learn Chinese history. We must respect our professional teachers and the leadership of different schools. During our discussions, You have all reminded us that teachers, especially Chinese history teachers, have a crucial role in um, when dealing with students. So they should be given respect. 
we should try not to make this subject political. As we said, we face three main challenges and um, three improvement recommendations. I would um, address um, certain points and I want to clarify a few things first. In my main statement, right now, 89% of the schools are already implementing specialized teaching. For 4% of the schools, they are still um, trying to, to incorporate Chinese history teaching. And for the remaining, um, the situations are, are different. If in a school, 50 to 60 percent of the students are non-Chinese speaking, there would be adjustments required in the curriculum. Chinese history is Chinese history. We might need to understand what is meant by specialized teaching. An independent subject would have its own mode of teaching and learning, and it would have a set of curriculum that would be the target in learning and teaching. Junior century students are already required to learn Chinese history, and there would be two sessions per week. So um, what if it, uh, the condition or requirement cannot be fulfilled? What would happen? This is something we must work on. However, would it be ideal to only allow a single mode of teaching for all schools in Hong Kong? As I said, the Association of Principals already shared their views. Secondly, as I said before, both ancient and modern history would be emphasized. The curriculum has not changed. But um, modern history has been um, undervalued or ignored, so we would rejuggle the balance. We w want to um, make learning more interesting and enhanced students' learning motivation. And number three, Mrs. Yip was right that um, political and cultural history are equally important. In the recommendation, um, both political and cultural history would be emphasized. This way we can um, provide a basic understanding to all students. And the literary classics as well as other um, classics or, or teachings would be taught in other subjects. And um, based on the students' capabilities and interests, teachers can continue to teach these classics or literary works in order to enhance their learning motivation. So this is equally important. Dr. K. Kwok talked about an objective understanding of history so that students can make reasonable judgment based on historical facts. In terms of revisions of the curriculum, some members suggested the inclusion of contemporary or even recent historical incidents. I reiterate that the current stage consultation paper is about collecting views on the main curriculum framework and summary, and this framework cannot list out all historical incidents in an, an exhaustive manner. For historical incidents such as the 1967 riots and the June 4th incident, we have not dodged from these incidents. And um, a lot of, um, and some teachers have received um, support in this regard. And um, based on the students' capabilities and interests, 
helping them to understand these historical incidents is important. I think that apart from providing knowledge foundation, history education is equally about thought training. We expect students to learn about history through recognition, understanding, consolidation, analysis, and critique, and in the meantime, establish their own perspectives on the history. In recent years, we have enhanced um, topical learning through visits. For example, for Chinese history, visits are paid to the mainland and um, cultural exchanges are also facilitated in recent years. These um, For these thematic visits, more than um, 75,000 students and 7,000 teachers have taken part. Our Chinese history teachers are highly professional. I trust that all teachers would use their expertise to teach Chinese history in an impartial manner in the training of the students. We have great faith in the, our teachers. In terms of um, enhancing resources and support to teachers, they are also important. As I said earlier today, Teachers are the ones who deal with students on a day-to-day -day basis, so providing more support to teachers so that they can teach Chinese history in an ideal environment is important. In 2016-17, to 17, we will offer various seminars and workshops for teachers, for example, in, for example, the curriculum leadership series, knowledge enhancement series, learning and teaching evaluation series, etc. We also provide a lot of teaching materials for our teachers so that they can enjoy more support in teaching and learning. We talked about digital teaching materials or IT materials. Um, they are widely adopted by teachers. President, all along the revision of Chinese history curriculum in junior century has attracted a lot of attention right from the start. And the consultation actually began in 2013. And by November 2015, a number of exchanges and consultations have been completed, and um, focus groups have been formed. So, um, and it was participated by the trade. We hope that some comments would con would um, continually be offered. We look forward to comments from stakeholders. The Education Bureau respects the professional leadership of different schools so that schools can decide the curriculum mode for Chinese history education based on their own situations, students' capabilities, and learning needs, and adjustments are required and also necessary. The development and promotion of Chinese history education is challenging and yet important, but um, with the right cooperation, we can get it done. Thank you. Mrs. Regina Yip, you can now move your amendment motion. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I now call upon Mr. Ip Kin Yun to move an amendment to the motion, Mr. Ip Kin Yun. Mr. Ip Kin Yun. Mr. President, I move that Mr. Chuan Kwok Kwan's motion be amended. I now propose a question to you, and that is that the amendment moved by Mrs. Mr. Ip Kin Yun to Mr. Horace Jones's motion be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Dr. Helena Wong claims the division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
呃，请各位同事翻。Members, please return your seats. We're still in the process of having a meeting here. Please refrain from、um, speaking among yourselves. In the hardship. Voting begins. Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The result is displayed. From functional constituencies, thirty-two percent, fourteen for, eleven against. Abstention six. From geographical constituencies, thirty-one present, thirteen for, twelve against, six abstentions. I think the question is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negatived. Ms. Starry Lee. Mr. President, I move that in the event of further deficient being claimed in respect of the motion of requiring the teaching of Chinese history as an independent subject at junior secondary school, this council shall proceed forthwith to the division after the bell has been rung for one minute. And I propose the question to you, and that is that the motion moved by Mr. Starry Lee be passed. Does any member wish to speak? And I put the question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by the majority of each of the two groups of members. That is, those returned by FC and those returned by GC through direct elections who are present and declare the motion passed. I order that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting in respect of the motion on requiring the teaching of Chinese history as an independent. Subject at junior secondary school, this council so shall proceed forthwith to the division after it has been rung for one minute. Mrs. Regina, yep, you may move your amendment. Mr. President, I move that Mr. Horace Jones motion be amended. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the amendment moved by Mrs. Regina Ip to Mr. Horace Jones motion be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. For those in favour, please raise your hands. Ms. Tanya Chan claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Please, 各位核对。
Members, please check your votes. If there is no question, the voting is closed. The result is displayed. From functional constituencies, 32 present, 18 for, 10 against, 3 abstentions. From geographical constituencies, 31 present, 16 for, 10 against, 5 abstentions. I think the question is agreed by a majority respectively of each of the two groups of members present, that is those returned by FCs and those returned by GCs through direct elections who are present. The figures are correct. I think the question is agreed by majority respectively of each of the two groups of members who are present. Dr. Helena Wong, point of order, Mr. President. There is something wrong with the number. Please check. Because I don't vote, so the number is correct. I think the question is agreed by majority, respectively, of each of, each of the two groups of members returned by FC and GCs through the elections who are present that declare the amendment passed. Members have already been informed that as Mrs. Eugenia Ibs' amendment has been passed, Dr. Edward Yu and Dr. Koka Ki have withdrawn their amendments. Mr. Horace Chung, you have 3 minutes 28 seconds to reply. The debate will come to a close after Mr. Horace Chung has replied. Mr. Horace Chung. Mr. President, today many members have made their viewpoints very clear on why they support the motion to um, require Chinese history as an independent subject. And yet we feel disappointed because the Secretary for Education, who is in charge of education in Hong Kong, um, doesn't seem committed to the education reform. It is the Secretary's responsibility because other officials in the education sector and other scholars in the education sector um, will perceive Secretary, as the leader, they will look up to you. So if you're not committed to implementing education reform, um, the future of Chinese history as a subject would be very dim. And I'd like to respond to uh, members' questions. Mr. Nathan Law said that according to an opinion poll, over 50 percent of respondents disagree with the government's proposal. I want to um, clarify that the DAB's opinion poll haven't asked respondents on the view of the government's proposal. And since uh, he's attaching such great importance to the DAB's opinion poll, I'd like to explain to him that 78% uh, of the respondents support and, uh, and um, enhancing the uh, content of uh, Chinese history, and some 75.6% uh, also supported uh, the um, setting uh, 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 the Chinese history as an independent subject. I want to say that it may be not be a, well, he said that it may not be a good thing to study Chinese history because um, the persons, um, some uh, persons actually became um, a, a, a dictator um, uh, or a tyrant. But I think this is twisted logic. Mr. Nathan Law also said that if Chinese history is an independent subject, um, it will become um, national education. And I was asked to clarify. And I was also asked whether the historical events that happened after 1905 would also be included. Mr. Long Yu-chung and Mr. Tan Yu-chan also expressed their concern whether uh, Chinese history, if uh, it is set as an independent subject, would become a tool of indoctrination. I asked members to read my motion very carefully, because my original motion has not interfered with the content of the curriculum. Uh, as usual, we put our trust in the, um, the professionals of the education sector. In terms of the uh, specifics of the Chinese history curriculum, it's not up to either you or me to decide, because as usual, we should put our faith in the education professionals. So please have some faith in them.
Uh, Mr. President, I urge members to support our, my motion so that we can put things back on track. I now put the question to you, and that is Mr. Jones, Horace Jones' motion, as amended by Mrs. Regina, it be passed. Will those in favour please raise your hands? Dr. Kwakaki claims a division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Chen Puyin Yi Yun. Dr. Pian Chen. Members, please check your votes. If there is no question, voting is closed. Results are displayed. From functional constituencies, uh, 32 present, 21 for, 10 against, no abstention. From geographical constituencies, 31 present, 16 for, 14 against, 1 abstention. The question, I think the question is agreed by a majority respectively of each of the two groups of members returned by FCs and JCs who are present. I declare the, emo the motion as amended, passed. It's now 7.36 p.m. I now adjourn the council meeting until tomorrow when we'll deal with the next motion.